What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to TTP Sports. And yes, it has been a, a stretch of a week and a half, at least, of not making videos, but I was on vacation with my family, and I was just really spending time enjoying the, with the family in California for over at least a week. So, and over that week and a half of not making videos, of course, the Flyers decided to make a lot of moves, and I'm not in the, the proper setup to report on this stuff. So, I'm going to summarize all the moves that the Flyers did over the span of a week and a half. So, the first move that was made was Chuck Fletcher decided to trade defenseman Ratko Gudas to the Washington Capitals for defenseman Matt Niskanen. And in hindsight, I do, I can get why this trade was made. So, Matt Niskanen, he's over 30 years old. He's won a cup before recently with the Washington Capitals. He's known more for getting, like, a point-getting defenseman, but last season was the least productive of his career and probably the worst of his career. So, in my vision, I don't expect Matt Niskanen to have that type of season again. I expect him to have at least a 25-30 to 30 point season, but I think Matt Niskanen was really brought to this team for the veteran presence, for the veteran leadership that can help guys like Provorov, Sanheim, and Shane Gosper, and Phil Myers. So, I expect Matt Niskanen on this team to be at least a top four guy that could just be the veteran leadership that this team needs, a veteran leadership for this young defensive core. So, the one problem with this deal that boggles my mind is Chuck Fletcher decides to retain 30% of Radko Gudis' contract, which is just really questionable. I don't know why he decided to retain that much salary from Gudis' contract. I don't know if, if, if it was the only way we would have gotten Niskanen for Radko Gudis, but it's just really questionable in my mind. It just, like... On another note, with these trades that the Flyers made these this past couple weeks, um, it just sees that every every fan possible finds a way to complain about any kind of move. So with the Niskanen deal, I can see the argument of why this could possibly be a bad move. It's the 30% retain of Goose's contract, and also you have two years left on Niskanen's contract with at least a $5.75 million cap hit for two more years, and he's on the wrong side of 30. I think he's at least 32. So, oh yeah, and he's also coming off of one of his worst seasons, and you're trading Radko Gudis, who came off probably one of his best seasons of his career. So, I can get the argument between those two, between those two, but is it really, will Matt Niskanen replicate what he did last season, and will Radko Gudis replicate what he did last season? Because Radko Gudis, in my opinion, he's a mediocre defenseman. He's a bottom six guy. He sometimes makes boneheaded decisions, but last year he really did shape up and not really make as many boneheaded decisions as he did in the past, but I really don't think he can keep that up, and he also had the best season out of a group of defensemen who were struggling a lot, like Provorov, like Shane Gossespair, so he just had the best season out of a guys group of guys who were struggling, so can Ratko Gudis replicate that? I have no idea. Can he replicate that in Washington? Still, I don't have any kind of idea what he'll do. So, I'm really I'm really in the middle with this trade. I like Matt Niskanen as a player, and I like what he can possibly bring leadership-wise to this team. And on a contract that he has, you have to play him in the top four at least. You can't play him in the bottom six. So, right now, I'm in the middle with this trade, so I can get both sides of the arguments. So, the next move that happens is during when the buyout period starts on Saturday. So Chuck Fletcher decided to waive Andrew McDonald for reasons to buy out his contract, the remaining of his contract. So Andrew McDonald, he had one year left on his contract going into this season at that really extreme cap hit that he had at least $5 million. So Chuck Fletcher puts him on waivers, and he cleared waivers, so he had the intention to buy out his contract to get some cap relief to possibly make more deals this offseason because... You need the extra cap to sign the RFAs like Provorov, Sanheim, and Travis Konechny, and Scott Walton. So, we need as much cap as we possibly can have, and we still have to make sure we sign Kevin Hayes to a contract that he likes. So, getting rid of Andrew, Andrew McDonald shakes up the defensive, defenseman a little bit, and you just don't have to worry about Andrew McDonald being on this team anymore. So, and that was the only time I've seen Flyers Twitter in a while actually be happy with a move. Everyone was praising that's Andrew McDonald that's finally off the team. Everyone just loved it. So 
That was the first time I've seen Flyers social media just happy in general. So that was a good move by Chuck Fletcher, and I understand why he made the move to get the cap relief now, rather than waiting another year for his contract to expire. So, going into the next season, uh, the cap hit from the buyout of Andrew McDonald will be $1.1 million, and then the following season, the cap hit will be $1.9 million. And then that's when, and then after that season, the cap will go away, because I think with the buyout of a one-year contract, the salary only lasts for two seasons. So... After two seasons is up, you don't have to worry about Andrew McDonald's contract anymore, which is a good thing. So, I do like this move by Chuck Fletcher. It gets Andrew McDonald off the team, and it gets up some needed cap relief going into this offseason to make a lot of more moves. So, this morning, actually, after when I just woke up, um, the Flyers made another trade, actually. So, they traded a second-round pick in this year's draft and a third-round pick in the 2020 draft to San Jose for defenseman Justin Braun. And I do like this move a lot. Justin Braun is a solid top four defenseman who can play the penalty kill, he can play five on five, and he can lock you in 20 minutes when needed. And the one thing that interests me with this deal is that Chuck, when Chuck Fletcher talked to Justin Braun, because Justin Braun didn't really expect to be traded from San Jose, he was really surprised that he he's coming to Philadelphia. And Chuck Fletcher stated that he doesn't want Braun to be the veteran presence on this de- young defensive core. He expects him to be a player. So what does that mean for Justin Braun? Is he going to play in the top four, or is he going to play on the top two pairing? So that's a really interesting move right there. Like, is Braun going to play with a guy like Provov, or is he going to play with a guy like Sanheim? So we really don't know what's going to happen right there. And like I said, Braun is a solid guy. He's a very underrated defenseman on the San Jose on the San Jose Sharks. A lot of San Jose Shark fans liked him, and they thought his play was a little bit underrated. So, it's a really solid move by Chuck Fletcher, and yet again, like I stated earlier, Flyers fans on social media decided to find some way to make this trade really pissed about it. So, and the more people that I see pissed about it, or the people that really enjoy analytics, because Justin Braun's analytics aren't really that good, and myself, I'm not that big on analytics, because I really don't understand them to that extent yet, but just looking at this from a team standpoint, I think this is a good good move. It's a guy that can log 20 minutes, he can play the penalty kill, and it's another stay-at-home defenseman that can help guys like Proveroff and Sanheim not really worry about bringing the puck up and getting into the play, because they'll know they'll have a guy back on the blue line that's going to be prepared defensively, so that it brings some relief to those young guys who are puck handlers and like to get into the offense. So, I like that solid move. I like that move by Chuck Fletcher, and Braun's contract. He has one year left at a three point eight million dollar cap hit. So if it doesn't work work out in Philadelphia for Justin Braun, you can see him walking at the end of uh, at the end of next season. Same thing with Matt Niskanen. This it could be like a change of scenery thing. What Mask- Matt Niskanen needed. I don't know why I couldn't say his name. So, it's really just. Possibly these guys, they just need a change of scenery, and they probably maybe need another coaching, another new coach to help them out with Elaine Vigneault. Because Elaine Vigneault, we all know that he has a really good reputation in this league. There's a lot of players that like him, and there's but there's a lot of young guys that don't like him because he's not really good with young guys. But Elaine Vigneault is going to have to learn because there's a lot of young guys on this team. And he's probably going to expect guys like Braun, guys like Nat Niskanen, to be the veteran presence on that defensive defensive core. So... In honesty, I do like both trades, but with the Niskanen trade, the one thing that just really boggles my mind is the 30% retaining of Gudis' contract, but I do like the Braun trade because we're only giving up a second and a third round pick. I know a lot of people don't like the fact that we're giving up draft picks like that, and especially at that quality, like a second and a third round pick, but the possibility of a second and a third round pick bringing you a guy that can be on your roster in, say, a year or two, it's very low possibility of happening. And the chances of those picks giving you an elite player, it's probably another low possibility of happening. But knowing the Flyers' luck, those second and third round picks will give the San Jose Sharks two elite players that will probably play on this team within three years. So we don't know what's going to happen. So what are your guys' thoughts on this trade? Oh, wait, actually, before I end this video, there's another move, not by the Flyers, but a division rival that happened. So the Rangers traded a first-round pick, one of their first-round picks in this year's draft, and Pionk, the defenseman, to the Winnipeg Jets 
for Jacob Truba, who is an RFA, who has been always been said he wants out of Winnipeg because he he doesn't think Winnipeg's going to give him the money that he wants. So the Rangers give themselves a really good top two pairing defenseman, a really young pairing defenseman as well, and it really accelerates the rebuild that they are in. Same thing, because they have the second overall pick going into this year's draft. So, depending on what the New Jersey Devils pick with the first overall, they're going to be either picking Jack Hughes or Kako. So, they're really getting two elite guys in the span of a week. So, you're getting a guy like Hughes or Kako who could possibly be franchise-changing, and you get a top-two defenseman that could really solidify your defensive core going into this rebuild. So... The Rangers really accelerated that rebuild right there, and a lot of Flyers fans were pissed on that trade because the Winnipeg Jets really undersold Truba because the Rangers really didn't give up that much. But who knows what Winnipeg would have wanted out of us. So there's really no what... You really can't go with the what-ifs on this deal because what if Chuck Fletcher just didn't want to give up what the Winnipeg wanted? And he probably... Even though the Flyers were rumored to go after Truba... Maybe Chuck Fletcher just didn't want to pull the trigger on on what Winnipeg wanted. And there's also the possibility that even if you traded for Truba, there's no guarantee that he wants to sign here because he is an RFA and he can hold out and he can wait for offer sheets to come out for him. So basically, if you trade for Truba and you can't sign him, it's really a waste of a trade. So there's really nothing Fletcher can do there from a trade standpoint. And he also has to worry about a ton of other RFAs that he has to sign. And he is also worrying about signing Kevin Hayes. So so also going into this this week's draft, we still have Kevin Hayes in contract negotiations, and there's been a bunch of reports saying the negotiations are going well for the Philadelphia Flyers, and they expect that they can sign Kevin Hayes. So if the Flyers do end up signing Hayes, I believe it's going to be around the five to six year range and at least six million dollars, because I think that's what Hayes wants, and I think that's when, what's going to get Hayes to sign with this team. So, what are your guys' thoughts on the move that happened in the past week and a half from the Philadelphia Flyers? What are your thoughts on the Niskanen deal? What are your thoughts on the Braun deal? What are your thoughts on the Andrew McDonald buyout? And just, what other moves do you think the Flyers are going to make going into draft day and going into the rest of the offseason? So, don't forget to drop a like, don't forget to leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, boys, and I will see you in the next video.